I'm going to show you how you can take a bunch of pictures of you and create an AI model with which you can generate unlimited images of yours, AI generated. This entire training process is going to take less than $5. I'm going to show you step by step. This video is going to have three different parts. The first one, data set creation. The second one, the fine tuning. And the third one, the final inference after we have the model ready. We're going to use Ostris AI LoRa toolkit on Replicate. For that, we need to create a zip folder of all our training images. Now, first, let's talk about the training images because this is one of the underrated discussions anytime I see any LoRa tutorial. The first thing that you need to have is you need to have a wide range of images. From my experiment and from various online communities, Flux LoRa seems to work completely fine even with 10 images. I would say maximum go till 15 or 12. Do not go beyond that because it might mess up your final result. Also, when you are going to look at the images, you have to make sure that there are not elements present in that image that might spoil your fine tuning. For example, one of the examples that I recently came across online is having a collar mic or even a type of glass or type of something that your subject always has got. So have different varieties of images, a wide range of images, different shots of images, different angles of images, different sizes of images. So once you have these 10 images, all you have to do is put these 10 images together in a zip file and then have it ready. Additionally, in my case, I was not focusing on the dimension of images. Sometimes you might see that I also have a low res image, which I was initially worried that it might not produce good result, but ultimately it produced good result. Also, I was not sticking to only one type of images. I created multiple images. One of the things that you have to make sure is that if you want much higher quality, you can also create a caption data set for all the images. For example, if you take this image, then you can say that, okay, a man standing behind or in front of a tree. So for whatever images that you have got, you can create a caption. And then for the respective images, you can store this in a .txt file. If you're not going to do that, a Replicate's interface will do that for you. But that is one of the easiest ways to improve the quality of images. After we have our data set ready, then we have to go to this particular link and create our model. This model gets created as a placeholder inside a Replicate. So just give a name that you would be able to use for recognizing this model later. Then click input images and upload your file. Once again, I'm uploading whatever you're seeing is without the caption file, but you can also do it. Also create a trigger, trigger word or the token that you want to use to call this model later on. So whenever you use this particular trigger word, it would basically call or invoke this particular character or a particular profile or particular style inside the broader flux. So flux plus LoRa with the trigger word, then enable the auto caption. And once you have the auto caption, which is by default enabled, that would automatically caption the image then say what is the image that you are uploading. So it's like a prefix. So in this case, I've said photo of Danush because I'm trying to create a LoRa for a human being. But if you're trying to do it for a style, then you can do it slightly different. You can say in the style of. So that once that is done, you can experiment with this. The most important thing in this entire process is the number of steps that you want to train. I wanted to be safe because I didn't want like a terrible model after like, let's say thousand steps. So I went ahead with 2000, but I know personally a lot of people who have got a lot of good result, even with thousand steps and 1200 and 1500 steps. So you can either take that risk, like go with 1200, 1500, or you can just try to play safe as like me. But the only thing that you have to remember is the larger the steps, the more compute time and also the more time that you're going to spend in training this model. With 2000 step, it was taking about like 45 minutes on each 100. But depending upon what you want to do, like for example, I would easily say that you can go ahead with 1500 instead of 2000 and then believe that you're going to get a good model. One of the ways you can store this model on the cloud is using Hugging Faces Model Hub. This is completely optional, but it is highly recommended. So go to your Hugging Face profile and create a new model and give a preferred name. Like in this case, I'm training Danush, who's the actor and I'm using Danush Flux. So now that model I've created, I've created as a repo and I've made it public. Somehow I had an issue with private repo. So I just went ahead with public. Even if you try and train for your personal model, then later on you can make it private. After you have created the repo, then you have to go to your settings and then go to access tokens and create a new write permission token. In my case, 
which already exists. So I can just invalidate and refresh and copy the token. If you do not have the token, create a new token with write permission for replicate to write the model into the hugging face repository. So add the token here and mention the repo. Now, when you mention the repo, all you have to do is copy this here and then mention it not with HTTP and all those things. Come back here and mention this. So your profile name and the model repo. Now at this point, you're pretty much set with everything. You've got like the number of steps, you've got the name, you've got the file, you've got the trigger word, and you have got ultimately uh, everything set up for you to go ahead with this. Any changes you want to make, you have to make it now and uh, you cannot make it later. One another important thing is the trigger word should be something that is unique and not necessarily a very common word. Now click training and once you click training, as you can see, it is going to begin the process of training or fine tuning, specifically speaking, fine tuning this model. And once the fine tuning process starts, it takes about like 45 minutes to complete. The good thing, unlike Google Collab here is that you don't have to panic that your browser is going to get closed. You don't have to panic that you're not going to save. You don't have to panic that you're going to run out of spaces. So the good thing here is that one, you can download the model within this interface and two, the model will also get a return on Hugging Faces Model Hub and three, it is on the cloud. So it is going to happen. So 45 minutes later, we will see the model. One important thing that I wanted to highlight here is that this particular character, you might think it is part of training data set. One of the reason I picked up this person, Danush, a South Indian actress, actor, is that I didn't want to pick somebody who is already part of training data. I'm not trying to improve. I wanted to show you that if you were to do this for you or me, then how would it look? I could have done it with my pictures, but I honestly don't have like 10 good quality pictures. So that's why I went ahead with Danush. And I also wanted to pick somebody who is not white skin so that, you know, people can understand the differences and nuances of coming from a different background. So in this case, I picked Danush. And as you can see here, the picture that you saw here is nothing like Danush. And uh, what we will see later on after we have fine tuned the model is how closely realistic the model creation or the AI image generation is to what the original picture in itself. 45 minutes later, we have the model successfully trained. So 40 minutes approximately. And again, if you have lesser steps, it will take lesser time. You can download the weights and keep it just for posterity. So it will download two files. I think uh, the LoRa safe tensor file and also a configuration file. Once you have got downloaded it, you can use it anytime you want. So there are a couple of ways to use this model. One, you can go ahead and then use it within replicate. And also you can verify whether you have got the model. So as you can see here, there is a config file and also the LoRa safe tensors file already stored inside our hugging face repo. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this hugging face repo as our input and then connect it to a different interface, which is the LoRa inference. See, once you have the model, you don't have to run it only on replicate. You can run it on Google Collab. You can run it on local machine. I think on Mac, it takes about like 40 seconds at the HF LoRa, which is the same LoRa repo that we created. Once you have uh, added it there, then you can play with the LoRa strength. LoRa strength is to indicate how much you want to give importance to LoRa. Imagine there is like this generation happening. There is the base model and there is LoRa. So how much you want to give LoRa importance? Then go ahead and then change the prompt. In this case, I'm just giving Danush as a keyword, as you can see here, the trigger word, as a Superman flying in the sky. I mean, this is by no means a great prompt. As you can see here, it's a very naive prompt. But the good thing with Flux, unlike Stable Diffusion, is that Flux is really good in adhering to the prompt. So whatever prompt you give, despite being a bad prompt, Flux would do a tremendous job of generating what you want. It takes a couple of seconds and then you have the image here. So you've got Danush, which in this case is very close to how Danush would look in real life and flying in the sky as a Superman. I think with this image, my only issue is with eyes. Uh, but if you just look at it a long shot, then this is a pretty good image. Uh, you can try with different prompts. The main thing is that you need to have the token word or the trigger word here. So let's try to create like a professional LinkedIn headshot. I mean, this is one of the biggest use cases for this. And like at $5 rupees, you can create unlimited headshots for you and you can own the model in itself rather than paying money to somebody. So very simple prompt, photo of Danush for LinkedIn headshot, professional photo, DSLR quality. I would encourage you to improve the prompt further, but let's see how this prompt is going to respond. So our image is ready and this is the professional headshot. We didn't even have to say that we want a suit. We want this kind of background, like, you know, uh, let's say a depth of field or a bouquet image.
but we can see that it has already managed to generate that good image which a lot of services on internet would charge you like uh, $50, $100 and this is like a model that you ultimately own. So let's try with the text. I mean, Lora is uh, sorry, Flux is really good with text. So we're going to compare the Flux character that we created in this case, Danush with a text like a banner saying, I'm not Danush. Once again, I'm by no means this is a great prompt, but let's take a look at it. One of the ways also you can improve the image is by increasing the number of inference steps. So we have got the image and it says, I'm not Danush. The final image that I generated as part of this experiment is photo of Danush in Star Wars scene with a green lightsaber. I don't think that it gave me a Star Wars scene, but the green lightsaber was good, even though it is not like exactly straight. But overall, I was quite impressed with the quality of LoRa that we generated. And I think I spent about like less than five dollars, including the inference. So I started with like something around like 95, 96 and I've got like still 92. Uh, this is uh, this is quite insane. Like now training your own model is kind of a commodity there. You don't have to pay for any service except that you are paying for a compute and then training your own model and then storing your own model and you can use it whenever you want to use it. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. It's quite elaborate and please share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. See you in another video. Happy prompting.